Hi, check out my latest dumpster find. It's a Fuji Xerox Apios port, whatever on earth that means, R3 C2201 for those playing along at home, and it's a gigantic A3 photocopier. And the great thing about these is that they, although they weigh a ton, they come on the wheels. There's actually uh, some supports on there so you can actually um, you know level it out and stuff once you get it into the office but uh, it actually looks in really good nick I believe it dates from well I don't know when this one was made but it uh, uh, it dates from like uh, 2008 or something like that it's 2008 vintage and uh, well let's uh, power it on and see if it works this is not the first photocopier I've got in the dumpster Let's turn the lights off there. So, oh, there we go. All right, it's gonna work. Focus. All right, here we go. Oh, conveniently, the switch is on <laughs> nice positioning. That's a really good design choice. Somebody was thinking there. Here we go. Cross your fingers. Um, so although it could be like up to a decade old, it's probably not that old, but that's when the model dates from. These things usually have quite a long uh, longevity. They sell them for quite a long time. It's not like they, uh, you know, replace models every nine months or whatever. So, anyway, mains power switched on. We'll see if it works. It, it doesn't seem to have, like, a uh, a lease thing on it. So, I don't think it's, like, an ex-lease. The company's usually taken back. Whoa! Hello? We had something. Hey, the screen looks a bit... How are you doing? Has it got a... Oh, No. Yeah, that screen doesn't look terrific, but it's there. It's whirring. Doesn't I can't see a contrast pot. Come on, it's making the requisite noises. Nothing hideous. There's a biograph there. Oh, yep, yep. The screen is a bit washed out. Uh, it's just like poor, poor angle. Hey, oh, something beeped. There you go. To begin, select a service. We're in like Flynn. Um, calibration setup. How do you uh? Machine status. Here we go. Uh, machine serial number, IP address. Um, I do believe it has uh, Windows 10 drivers. That's what it looks like on the website anyway. Um, print reports. Hello. McFly. No. No, maybe the touch screen's gone. The screen does not look good. So maybe that's why they ditched it. No, nah, yeah, close doesn't work. Okay. Yeah, the touch screen, touch screen's died. See if it actually, uh, see if it copies. Because you can typically, can't get out of that, interrupt. Let's get an old ETI magazine, there you go. Just so I happen to have it lying around. And, and can we just do start? No, because it's copy, email, hey, there we go. Copy, we're in, we're in. We should auto paper select. Paper select is unavailable. Please select a paper tray. Load the following paper. Auto. I whacked some. Uh... It's really annoying. Still don't know if it works or not. Oh, come on. There's no arrow keys. Can't manually override this thing. What a bummer. Well, let's not muck around. Let's get straight into it. There we go. We can just take off the uh, front panel like that. It's got it. Oh. Does that ca does the cable pull out conveniently? Anyway, there you go. yeah, there we go. I can just unscrew that. Check that out. Nice. So we can go work on that separately. Ha! Ah, brilliant. What a Bobby Dazzler. And we're in like Flynn. Let's check it out. Here's our main board here. We've got our backlight driver there. That could be, uh, well, it could be the um, uh, CFL uh, tube in there that's going. Uh, maybe you, know, you might be able to pump up the voltage on the backlight or something to compensate. But anyway, the screen still works. What we're concerned about is the uh, touch screen. And of course, here's the LCD ribbon going off here. We've got all, it looks like we've got all our diff pairs running here over to the LCD uh, driver. Would they need diff pairs for that? I don't know. But anyway, they seem to be running them. And here is your uh, touchscreen, the uh, classic four-wire resistive uh, touchscreen. Uh, we've got some discrete trannies and diodes around there, so that's rather interesting. Looks like we have ourselves a five-pin uh, voltage reg there, but I'm just going to uh, 
have a little fiddle around with this, measure it, make sure it's okay, you know, we can get the meter on that and then uh, play around with it and we should be able to see if that's okay and if the actual touch screen itself is okay, like there's no breaks in the ribbon or, you know, anything else that's gone wrong, then uh, we might have a look at the circuitry. Let's just have a probe around there. Half a K. Sounds reasonable enough. 6.7K. Oh yeah. Okay, the great thing about this cable is that I can put it on a uh, stand here and work and they've actually got voltages on uh, the various um, test points here. Like, uh, for example, they've got 3.3 volts here. So the supply, measure that. 3.335, no wackers. And uh, uh, there's one labelled 4.75. That's actually 5.01. So that actually sounds okay, like a, it's a 5.5 a volt power supply. Why they put 4.75, that just happens to be the exact uh, tolerance of a general 5 volt power supply. So 5% low, so maybe it's sort of like some minimum voltage, but I wouldn't worry about that. So the supply voltages are actually, uh, they look okay, and there doesn't look to be any physical damage to any other uh, components or anything like that. So that regulator's good, the supply rail's good, obviously all the LCD driver and other uh, circuitry is all uh, working fine. It's just the uh, something to do, potentially up here with the uh, touchscreen. And if I get in there, and actually measure one of the pins on the resistive input and then I touch the resistive screen, bingo, we've got a change. So something is changing. That's good. Um, so it should be registering at least something on the screen, even if it was like uncalibrated out or something like that. It should be like pushing at least random buttons. Well, check out the bottom of the board here. Look, I'm surprised they're uh, double-sided populated this. Look, they've actually uh, wave soldered and check out the uh, pads on there. You can see how it like sort of snakes off there. It's not just directly on. That's really quite unusual. Is that some sort of uh, solder feathing um, type uh, system? Anyway, you can see the uh, glue under the components down in there. And um, yeah, well... They're transistors. I've checked all the diodes on the top here, and they're all okay. Um, they all buzz out. Looks like there's two different types of uh, diodes in there. And the trannies, I assume that they're um, some sort of uh, little MOSFET-y uh, type thing, perhaps. But uh, yeah, it looks like there's some residue on the board. Check that out. It almost looks like there's spilled something on there, but there's absolutely no damage. Like anywhere else so I don't think so I think that just uh, comes from the factory light that it looks like there's you know some water or something is, is spilled on there but that's just uh, they just haven't bothered to clean that I suspect okay sorry but this is uh, actually impossible to film I think um, I actually just bodged in a touch screen which had Almost the same pitch on there. I think it was. I think it was the same pitch, pretty close. But I had a tiny little cable. But I can get my fingers under there, and I was able to uh, get the screen. I put it in like the email mode or something, where there were lots of different uh, things on the screen, and I was able to get it to respond. Um, to my touches, of course, it's not going to be calibrated properly for this particular resistive uh, touchscreen or whatever. But it kind of shows that. It, you know, the circuitry is probably working and doing its thing. So it looks like the it, it is um, possibly that uh, faulty touchscreen on the uh, panel itself. Now I'm just trying to uh, get everything disassembled here. It's a bit of a uh, pain, but take a look at the keys. What they have to go through to uh, uh, do this. Here's the uh, here's the board, of course. You know, it's got uh, uh, tactile um, switches on there, right? But look at the effort they have to go to, to, uh, that's just a, oh, it's just a thing to keep out spillage or whatever coming through, I guess, all sorts of crap uh, coming through the keys, um, you know, because everyone's drinking their coffee and eating their um, muffin around the uh, copier machine, stuff like that. Anyway, look at all the 
um, you know, the intricate uh, mouldings that they have to produce. Okay, that's all in one big thing. But like, you know, this individual button here with these little retainers, that one's a different size and a different colour to this one here. I don't think they fit, do they? No, they're actually different. So the price you pay for wanting a stylish button, which is slightly bigger than this one here, they could have reused the same moulding. No, got to do a different one. No, got to do a different one up here for all this. Got to do this one down here just for that one button. Like, they have to design and get those manufactured. It's just, you know, ridiculous the effort they go to. Um, but I guess... Yeah, you know, that's you have uh, separate teams that do this. One that you know a marketing or product design team or whatever that uh, actually you know designs the look and feel of the thing, and then uh, you know the poor um, implementation engineers have to go. Oh God, I've got to get another separate molding for that. Unbelievable. I'll tell you what, it's quite a bit of a convoluted system. They've got some screws on the front. You have to get this front cover off first, but to do that, you've got to get the back uh, part of the back cover off first, and it's just all rather complicated. Um, so, yep, it's all weird. But anyway, we should be able to now, if I can, we should be able to uh, take all this out and access the touchscreen. Ta-da! Jeez, what a mess. I hope I can remember how that all goes back together. Okay, hopefully you can get this. I don't want to breathe, but uh, watch, the, I'm probing like the bottom two pins there. And look, look, if I move this, look at that. And I can actually get it to come good. All right, so if I get my finger on the bottom, touch it, slide it along like that, there you go, it's changing. But if I move it, yeah, I can get it to go open. There you go. So there's definitely something wrong on here. And I suspect um, I, I'll have a good look under the uh, microscope at any like micro uh, cracks or anything in the uh, copper on there. But uh, it could very well be the hot uh, bar uh, attachments on there. So I might be able to just uh, maybe reheat those. But let me go have a look under the microscope. So just as a matter of course, one of the things I'm going to look for is any uh, micro cracks on the uh, copper or anything like that, and that all looks okay. So, so if we actually get a good resistive uh, touch screen, this is on the back of uh, one of these um, 4D uh, systems things, then we'll notice that the, uh, the way it works is exactly the same. Pins 1 and 2 have nothing. Pins 1 and 3 have a resistance, pins 1 and 4 have nothing, but pins 2 and 4 also have a resistance. So, that's exactly the same as we're uh, measuring on this one, but as you saw, I think it might have some sort of, uh, you know, a crack or something like that that's stopping it um, from doing that. Okay, it seems to be doing the business now. And if I touch it, then it obviously, and then it can vary. There we go, like that. So um, all four wires seem to now be functional. But uh, anyway, I might sort of cobble it back together, um, see if it works now after uh, sort of like you know heating up all those pins. Maybe it was some intermittent contact that broke it that didn't get the uh, X Y coordinates required. So therefore, it just didn't respond. All right, that's nicely cobbled back together. <laughs> Should work a treat. Let's turn it on. And uh, it should all power back up. Yep, screen's upside down though. All the electrons are going to fall out. Uh, sorry, you probably can't see that. The contrast, I don't think, is terrific. Hey! Hey! It's doing stuff. Have we fixed it? Can I go near the top? Sorry, I don't know which orientation's what. Okay, I'll try and line the screen up on here. Ah, oh, there we go. Yep, yep, there we go. Close. Got it. Yep. Uh, copy. Yep. It's working. Beautiful. Paper select. That's the one I want. If I can press start. Ah, we're on our way. It's scanning. Oh no, I didn't have the magazine in there properly. It should have copied something. Yes! Winner, winner! 
chicken dinner. And yeah, there's no, no uh, fuser um, problems on there. The toner's all fused. It was a dead touch screen. Reheating the connections down on there. I just used an iron at uh, 260 degrees. Uh, no, no solder on it. That's, that's probably like actually conductive adhesive on there rather than a reflow soldered under there. I believe, you know, probably just something like that. Anyway, I just heated it up and it seems to it now work a treat. You beauty. Gonna put it back together now. It doesn't mean it still could not be intermittent or something like that. By the way, it actually came with uh, this cable here, which goes into this uh, empty port under the uh, paperclip thing here. So I'm not sure actually what went under there, but it came supplied with the cable. Meh. Okay, we'll just try it before I put the whole back cover on and then uh, whack it back on. Uh, screen contrast. Hey, winner winner chicken dinner. There you go. Turn up the contrast, turn it down. Maybe looks a bit better down there. Save that. Ah, we're back in action. It's just like I bought one now. Machine status. Print reports. Here we go. Configuration. Please let me report you want to print and press start. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Okay, that's a configuration report. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, man. I run out of paper. Okay, we want to check faults. Error history report. Why can't it just display it on the screen? I don't... Maybe there is, and I... I don't know. Whatever. A couple of jams back in 2017. Wow. What? Nothing since 2017. That's all right. And 50% remain in black, 75% cyan, uh, magenta, and 50% yellow. Beautiful drum cartridge. All okay. Waste toner. All okay. Awesome. There you go. That is like I bought one. Um, I, it was just set to standard image enhancement and everything else, but that looks to work just fine. And ta-da, there's inside the uh, main processor board, which just uh, pulls out, you undo screws, comes out, we've got all the uh, memory and whatnot. Looks like we've got a, uh, like a <laughs> separate real-time clock uh, chip. And there's the hard drive. Yes, it uh, stores everything it copies, apparently. Um, that's just a regular SATA drive, so yeah when you toss these things out you want to uh, erase the hard drives anyway um huge freescale uh part down in there um and some custom fuji xerox stuff absolutely enormous like uh, whether they're you know custom asics they could very well be they um these they put a lot of engineering into these things absolutely remarkable but yeah mm, nice huh ton of engineering goes into photocopies it's unbelievable so there you have it repair successful beautiful <laughs> classic dumpster find and uh, turned out to be a reasonably interesting repair just the touchscreen that's why they threw this thing out they couldn't be bothered it was probably already 10 years old and I still don't know the uh, manufacture date of this thing probably not that old maybe eight years old or something and uh, it obviously it looks like it works fine I haven't tested like the Ethernet and functionality and everything else but uh, apparently I can get Windows 10 drivers for this thing it's got a3 capability it's got like four paper trays on the thing absolutely amazing um, full color and it's, it's a pretty reasonably modern photocopier what's that bracket don't know it's a random bracket I think that was, that was on there when I got it from the dubstar haven't tried like the feeder and stuff like that I don't know maybe it could have been having issues but uh, the fault report was pretty good uh, so it looks like it was just the uh, adhesive the conductive adhesive holding that uh, flat flex strip down to the glass on the uh, LCD and um, just I just heated that up there's probably other ways to repair uh, stuff like that if you do that a lot and uh, let, let us know how you repaired it but I just heated it up um, each one and it came good no worries winner so if you like that please give it a big thumbs up as always discuss down below catch you next time